Hey you, thank you for clicking on this video. Today we are talking about war. What is it good for? As Edwin Starr asked. And when I was younger, to be fair, I thought, yeah, what is it good for? Absolutely nothing. It makes people sad, people die needlessly and there must be way better solutions to go about conflict right what about reason well as we talked about in our last video about violence there are limitations to reason at one point if you can't get along with one another or the other party simply won't listen or you absolutely need the other's resources well, one thing you would do is to simply take it from them. That's what we've been doing for millennia in societies. However, these things have always scaled. Meaning if you are in a small group and you want to take someone else's banana, you just do it and you know, it's annoying for the one who lost his banana, but there's no big deal, right? However, if you scale that to modern day nations, if somebody wants to take someone else's oil, then all of a sudden it becomes way worse because you don't just take someone's oil and uh, nothing happens. You need to impose whatever you take. And the one who defends his resources well, is going to defend it as hard as he can. And as a nation, it is hard to just cross the border and say, okay, I'll play rock, paper, scissors for your resources, right? That simply doesn't work because, uh, well, the nation's gonna be like, yeah, well, but win or lose, I'm not gonna t let you take all my resources. So what tends to happen is that there needs to be a show of force that is so overwhelming that the other party that the ad opponent simply cannot refuse that which you take by force or it cannot refuse that it won't be bullied one way or the other and that clarification has put war in a completely different perspective for me at least because it's not about all the victims who fall during a war their families and all the resources that are depleted these shows of force and these resource depletions are necessary. <laughs> that is until we sit around a campfire and make a unanimous decision that playing rock, paper, scissors for resources is a completely valid means of domination <laughs> or something similar. <laughs> this is only applicable, of course, as long as we maintain tribal forms of societies if one day we decide to drop all the borders to drop all our differences and simply work together huh who knows maybe we won't need war or maybe the wars will be on a different scale and become ideological or something else Strife and struggle is something that we've known as long as I can remember learning in history books. And it would be a bit naive to think that these things will stop. And as long as that is the case, and we have strife, in order to ensure that we win, we will need to level up our weapon system and our violence each time so that we can make sure that either we obtain what we want or we defend what we need. But our best hope may be for now that we live in this divided world might be the threat of excessive violence to an extreme. As that, well, makes everybody think twice about starting a war. Because nobody wants a second world war or first world war. Those were horrible. <laughs> Nevertheless, after the first world war, everybody promised never again. And then we had a second world war after which everybody promised never again. However, the USA since 1945, that's 76 years ago, 
I've only been at peace for 17 years. So war, huh. what is it good for? Dominance, defense, and ironically, peace. I hope you enjoy watching this video as much as I enjoy making it. If you do, please check around the channel. There is much more content. Consider subscribing, liking, and clicking the notification bell for further content. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the future. Bye.